okay so these are the uh, broad idea for today okay yes yes okay and uh, after a few glitches hopefully we are going to uh, go in more details so let us start with uh, some things that we already saw about your uh, you know uh, explicit and implicit representation which i guess you are all little bit familiar with okay so let me uh, throw some hints on uh, why this is a important topic because uh, if you are aware of a lot of air, aerospace and automotive applications right where you are having uh, free form surface design okay it is not same as uh, what you use your you know uh, second degree equation a little bit more on that why because you have to have some flexibility in uh, designing these structures okay these structures are very sophisticated ones okay i suppose say if i want to change some shape locally okay i need to uh, know the behavior suppose if i do something how this entire body is going to behave on that so i i need to know little bit more about uh, how the behavior as opposed to what your explicit or implicit equations can do i'll just little bit elaborate on this a uh, little later okay so are you guys seeing my screen now any problem we can see sir yes sir Okay, everything yes, is sir, on the, the post it yes. on that. Okay, yeah. So now let me just uh, we saw these uh, two representations, explicit representation and the implicit one. We saw some basic uh, equations like you know explicit one. You have something like y equals x square parabola. Or, you know implicit as many of you told this is a prominent equation <clears throat> that we have been used. So this is a form that probably you may have used in some places but may not be aware. of this is a parametric form okay or you may not have heard of the word parameter on that okay that is the one thing that we have to look at in more detail on that so the idea here is that each one x is becoming a function of u or sometimes we use the other uh, letters like t you know all other letters also will come into play so you have to bear with this and understand the implication of using those letters on that okay so let me just little bit go into the detail uh, of this so we'll see that Okay, this we already saw some examples, and I just have a you know empty slide for you guys to understand or post something. Okay, so we are going more into the details of a parametric representation on this. Okay, that is what the whole idea. <clears throat> okay, so so this is the explicit form that you have in terms of the parametric ones. You can see that x is a function of t, y is a function of t. I'll try to be you know. as less uh, mathematical as possible okay uh, <clears throat> so this you can write it in terms of p of t equals you know x of t and y of t this is a vector representation and in 3d space we can see this is how we are going to represent this okay so now <clears throat> let me just uh, give a simple idea i think uh, if i remember uh, did you see this equation in any other talk before in some form it's a bezier curve equation Oh, this is a complex function yeah so if you are uh, if you looked at your first day presentation on optimization there was a talk about what <clears throat> you remember he discussed about your uh, convex optimization problem right and uh, what are the conditions <clears throat> on the convexity he talked about convexity do you guys remember that so you post s or no on the chat box okay that much i know that you guys on page with me <clears throat> okay so always interact so that i can know that you guys are at least uh, receiving the thing on the other end okay yeah so this is what you might have seen so i'll just little bit elaborate on that what is the meaning of this so you can see that a line okay can any point on a line can be represented in a parametric form okay what does that mean there is a parameter along this line vary and it could be starting from 0 to 1 typically uh, we maintain this between 0 uh, to 1 <clears throat> and any point p of t can be represented by this equation okay so what is the point at t equal 0 so if you substitute that in this equation what will be at t equal 0 okay at t equal 0 it will be <clears throat> p not and t equals 1 it will be p1 it will be p1 so for any other t between 0 to 1 where you get the point on you will get the point on the line segment joining p0 and p1 suppose if i say t equals minus 1 what will happen so, so t is 
you will get a point uh, outside the line segment okay you will get a point somewhere on to the left of more precisely it will be on to the left of the point p not and similarly if you have d greater than 1 then you will see that you will get a point on the other side of the p1 okay so this equation can also be written i think this is what may have told you can see this uh, alpha not and alpha 1 Okay, and then you can see that alpha i is becoming zero to one, and sigma alpha is equal to one. Okay, this is another important condition. Okay, and you can see that here alpha naught is one minus two, and alpha one is t. So you can see one minus t plus t, and this summation is equal to one. So this is what we call this as a convex combination, and this is only for two points. Okay, convex combination for two points. Okay, so two points means it becomes a for any point on the line segment joining p naught and p one. Okay. Suppose, suppose if I say three points, what can you say about that? What can you say about this equation of convex combination? Similarly, it's for p not plus alpha and p two. But geometrically, what can you think of? Correct. But geometrically, sir, we just need uh... only plane is correct, right? but we have only plane. three points, right? P one, p one, p two. So only two uh, points are uh, necessary so to draw like so. So okay, triangle. that will become I mean, a triangle. Okay, instead of a plane, you can see that it will be a relation between a points in the the triangle. Okay, let me just uh, show that picture. So you can see that. Okay, you can see that uh, there is a triangle here. <clears throat> okay, and then sorry, I really forgot to mention this. So P not P one and P two. So if you have this relation alpha not P not plus alpha one P one plus alpha two P two. So, what will be for any point t lying between zero to one, or any parameter value t lying between zero to one? Where are you going to get the point on this p not p one p two, or on this triangle? So, where do you think inside? Okay, any other answer? Will it be outside the triangle? No, sir. Okay, for sure it won't be outside the triangle. So, leaving the outside case, what are other possibilities? Only the triangle border, sir, or it's inside included. Okay, it will either be on the boundary of the triangle, which are basically the edges of the triangle, or it could be inside the triangle. Okay, so you can see that uh, given any domain. Okay, you can see that uh, this uh, relation of what are called convex combinations. Uh, basically, you will get either a point on the inside or on the boundary. Suppose, okay, I'll probably jump a little bit ahead. Suppose if I have set of points like this, okay. So, what do you think this convex combination will do of these set of points? These are more number of points, not just two or three. So now I can write, uh, you know, broader set of equation, you know, up to up to let's say alpha and p n. Okay, so that belong to this point. So, what do you think will be the N degree polygon. N degree polygon, sir. N degree polygon. I mean, n-sided, n-sided polygon. N-sided. Okay, that's good. So n-sided polygon. Okay, but that n-sided polygon is called as. Remember, what will be the shape of that n-sided polygon in the sense whether it will be a convex or a non-convex? Convex. Okay, so that's convex. always going to be a convex. So if you try to do that, you will get something like this. Okay. So trying to do the best possible one as you said it's an n-sided one okay and this shape that is enclosing all the points and it is uh, it is convex so this shape in general is called as the convex hull okay remember this point i'll also show some more pictures later on okay so th this will enclose all the points in such a way like this becomes a what is called as a convex hull okay so that is a very important uh, notion that you have to remember and uh, we will uh, do that okay so some more uh, i'll just give you some more example so we saw an example for a straight line the parametric one for a straight line okay now we can also think of extending to other uh, you know uh, non not just for straight lines so something like so here is an example so uh, you must have seen this example right what is this uh, shape so circle so It's a circle parameterized by uh, radius a and uh, r and theta. R and theta. Okay, which basically r is more like a cos theta is what the parameter is. Yeah, you can say it's an r and theta, but theta is typically the parameter. So as you vary theta, you are going to get different points on a circle. But this form, 
you may not have seen this have you seen this form this is also a parametric representation for a circle okay not in terms of theta but in terms of t okay going in from 0 to 1 you can try to derive that uh, I, I i think many of you may not have seen this equivalent form of a parametric representation so the major takeaway is that for one shape okay <clears throat> Uh, you can actually have multiple uh, parametric representations. Okay, each one has their own advantages and disadvantages. We may not uh, go too much into the details of uh, which is better than the other parametric representation. Okay, we may not go into the details, but in general, you can say that uh, there are possibilities of getting different parameterizations for the same shape. Okay, I mean, of course, it's all kind of loosely speaking, mathematically, uh, you know, math. Yeah, you have to have the bound correctly, you know. Uh, uh, this is theta from going from you can think of 0 to 2 pi okay all those things you can come on like your t is lying between 0 to 1 you can see uh, you know you can uh, see what are all the other parametric bounds so which is always bounded entity okay and uh, as a homework or a lab work i suggest like you guys uh, look at uh, what are the parametric representations possible for other second degree curves okay like circle we have seen and uh, we have ellipse parabola hyperbola and so on so I would urge you to look at this as your, uh, you know, homework or a lab work that you can uh, think of doing. On. Okay. So this is all, of course, so far, so far, uh, you know, simple. So I think uh, this is one example of how we display a parametric. Curve. Remember that when you want to, when you want to do the display, okay, you still have to pick up a co coordinate system. And then in this case, we typically pick up the Cartesian coordinates. And this space is your uh, normal space of X, Y, Z. And this is very important. You can also visualize uh, the curve's behavior in terms of what are called parametric spaces. Okay, parametric space. This is, I don't know whether you are able to see that this this curve is uh, x x versus u, and then uh, similarly the other ones also. Okay, and this is y versus u, and then this is z versus u. So you can also actually you know you can go back and forth. I can give you some uh, shapes on the parametric space. And you can also try to deduce what happens in the uh, you know Cartesian space or any other uh, coordinate system that you use it there. So okay, those things are a little bit uh, more involved. And so this is a basic idea of given a parametric equation, like you know how can you display that? Because remember, this is a vectorized form kind of a thing. So this is an x of u, this is y of u, and this is z of u. Okay, and then you can represent this in terms of p of u as a vector. Okay, x of u, y of u, and z of u. So this is one of the greatest advantages if you think of as a parametric equation. <clears throat> so let me just put briefly, without going into too much details of the advantages uh, of this uh, parametric representation. Uh, so you first, as I showed, uh, told you, you can uh, you can represent it in a vector manner, which means that uh, all your uh, you know fundamentals from linear algebra, matrix, uh, you know all will come into picture okay it's very amenable for your processing okay remember uh, currently linear algebra and other matrix is very popular because of the way you can write code and implement and also understand uh, how the implication of this uh, matrix and so on so this also amenable because of this vector representation of this equation p of u and uh, i don't know whether this point is very clear on that maybe i'll i'll touch upon it uh, next time maybe in the next couple of slides it will be coming uh, so have you heard of uh, transformations the word transformation yes sir yes sir yes, so sir. can you give some examples for transformation sir uh, we can uh, basically any uh, square matrix can be uh, thought of as a or linear linear Why is square matrix for example let's say if i have a point can i do some translation can't i do some translation or transformation on the why it is only a linear transformation okay suppose i have a point p x comma y okay so i want to transform this what is the meaning of transform i can either rotate or either uh, you know uh, translate uh, or even you know a shear and other things also could come into picture okay now if i if i am in 2d space okay uh, can you guys uh, tell what will be the size of this transformation matrix have you uh, read about this it will be 2 by 2 sir 2 by 2 any other answer 
if it is linear then it is 2 by 2 but if we want to translate then it will goes up to 3 plus 3 so you have to account for translation also right that means it will be a it will be a 3 by 3 matrix okay maybe i'll uh, i'll probably go into details a little later on in case required Okay, so, okay, briefly, I'll just tell, suppose you have the point X and Y and 1 here, okay, we have to represent this one. So, okay, if you don't have this guy, let's say that, uh, let's say that I have only X and Y and I, somebody said 2 by 2 matrix, okay, A, B, C, D, let's say it performs some action. Okay, now you guys just imagine, let's say this guy going to 0 and 0, okay, let's say this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. And I want to use this matrix to translate this. Let's say I want to go from, you know, 0 to 0 to, let's say, 1 to 0. Okay, 1 comma 0. So, if I use this matrix uh, 2 by 2, do you think we can achieve this goal of going from 0, 0 to 1, 0? No, sir. So, if you do a 0, 0 of this, finally, what you'll have, you also get a, whatever be these values, right, A, B, C, D, you will get a, 0, 0. So, there is no translation possible with the, briefly, I tell there is no translation possible with the 2 by 2 matrix, okay. So, that is where we have to go for a 3 by 3 matrix. So, you represent it as x, y, 1. Uh, I am not going to too much details of it. This is coming from the homogeneous coordinate system. And then you have to have like, you know, let's say you have, sorry, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, let's say. And then you will have, let us say, uh, you know, L, M and then a 1, okay. Now, what this will do, this matrix multiplication will do, it will take the point x comma y to where? This is just a simple matrix multiplication, okay. Uh, x plus L and y plus L. Yeah, it will go to, so x, y will go to x plus L and basically you are doing the translation. So, if L is 0 and M is 1, then you can see that it from 0, 0, it goes to 1, 0. So, you actually for a 2D, okay, you actually need a 3 by 3 matrix, trans 3 by 3 transformation matrix on that, okay. And similarly, if you are in 3D space, what would be the size of the matrix? 4 by 4. Yes. Huh? 4 by 4. I did four, 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 four. Yeah, it is a four by four matrix. Okay, I think uh, some of you, I think they may, I thought they may have handled transformation, but anyway, if you want, I can little bit go deeper into that. Okay, so that is uh, one of the things that is very much amenable if you are in, you know, you see that vectors. Now you can immediately see we can use all the matrix algebra and so on and do a lot of uh, operations like translation, rotation, everything. And as you can see, it's a vector. So, dimensions doesn't matter after that. You can go to any dimension. So, this point is little bit, the last one is little bit, you know, uh, kind of intrigue. For example, it can work without a slope breakdown. For example, if I give you a vertical line, okay, what is the slope of a vertical line? Sir, it will be it's infinity. So, when you have computations uh, like, uh, is it infinity? Okay. So, because it is, let's say, y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1, and you can see that x1 and x2 are same, and it goes to infinity. Now, when you use the explicit uh, representation like y equal to mx plus c, how do you handle this? So, how do you handle this? Because m is what now? m is infinite. Now, how do you do with y equals mx plus c? So, how do you handle this? Let's say you are performing intersection between two lines, okay, as an example. You might have studied in uh, some of your uh, linear algebra, right, where you solve Ax equal to b, right. In two dimensions, that equation is essentially amounting to your, you know, intersection of two lines, right, if you are uh, remembering your linear algebra <clears throat> or if you took uh, any linear system of equation in, uh, you know, two dimensions. Okay, so how do you handle this? Obviously, you have to have, uh, if you are code it, you have to have some special cases for m equal to 0 or, you know, then check whether x2 equals x1. So, you have to handle in lot of different ways, okay. Whereas, if you are using the vectorized representation, you can actually, you know, use it in a vectorized form. You don't have to worry about using x2 minus x1 and so on. So, that is one of the great advantages of using this uh, parametric representation, okay. So, any doubts uh, so far, guys? 
any sir uh, when you had uh, explained about uh, the parliamentary representation for a convex combination uh, where you uh, put n points uh, you drew a, a polygon uh, which you said was n sided uh, but um, my doubt is that um... so essentially okay that is kind of a loose definition essentially what will happen is that it will be an enclosure where you can find any point inside the polygon also it is not only the outside shape you are able to see my blue color shape right yes sir so uh, would it basically, have to be yeah basically it will cover the entire area and the boundary of that will be a convex shape so the boundary uh, doesn't necessarily have to have n sides right sir because the end no, points no, no, could no, lay no. inside okay, the sorry. okay okay this end and that end there is a collision because not required not required okay, this okay, is sir. only a shape that you obtain okay i think there is a okay. i think there is a mutilation of notation yeah so it is not exactly an n sided uh, thing that you require it is basically a uh, convex polygon that will enclose all the points. In fact, when you talk exactly about the convex combination, it talks about any point on the inside of that shape also. Okay, but when we speak about the convex cell, we loosely speak about the boundary of the convex cell. We only assume that as the boundary of the convex cell that we are dealing with. Okay, typically. Okay, though in principle, or, you know, you are supposed to talk about the interior of the convex hull also. Yeah, it's right. You are right. It's no it's not necessarily an n-sided polygon as respect to the uh, n but you can see that it is a union of all that and that union will amount to this convex cell okay that is the idea so maybe we can go back and look at the convex combination in more detail okay but the idea is that you will get a convex enclosure and we call that as convex hull we look at the boundary of the convex cell that is the idea but remember that this property is this uh, convex cell is extremely important in today's discussion Okay, let me maybe, since you asked that, let me ask you one more question on that. Suppose, suppose if I have, uh, you know, like you have points like this, okay. So what will be the convex hull here? Do you see these guys? I'm putting an arrow now. So what will be the convex hull of this uh, set of points? It will be a quadrilateral, sir, of the uh, okay. four. Yeah, be a quadrilateral. So you can see that. So I'm just trying to ask you whether you can visualize the convex hull without employing the definition of convex combination and so on okay so that is very important you need to come up with the interpretation of this equation that is more important than you know going into the too much details of it and as long as you can get a far idea for example if i have another set of points let's say i have all points on a hexagon okay let's say on rfi side so what will be the convex cell of this guy so it will be a hexagon or a, a pentagon sir so it will be in a it will be a entire set of points itself okay where all points lie on the convex hull okay so by now yes, i sir. guess you guys should have a fair understanding of what a convex hull is okay very important and i'll come back to this point later on thank you sir okay. sure sure no problem i think that's a good point which i also kind of as a you know confusion in the notation correct okay so i think uh, aditya had talked about the cubic splines okay in your first class i heard that he gave an exercise also these cubic splines uh, in some sense also called as hermite curves okay in the not necessarily cubic you can increase it to quintic and so on degree five so you must have seen an equation i think uh, if i remember he would showed an equation like this right isn't it something like this yes sir no can you guys type yes sir uh, like uh, each thing divided into three uh... Yeah, so you have i equal to 0 to 3. You can see that you have got a cubic equation. Sorry, I think I just had to move it a little bit. Yeah, so this is the equation that he might have shown, shown you on the other day, right? Where you have this summation symbol. They say essentially the same equation I have written uh, in an expanded form, okay? And you can see that in your uh, normal form, when you write it, uh, you have these coefficients, right? Okay, but you will say that this has, you know, y equals probably something like this, right? ax cube plus whatever, bx square plus cx plus t. Right? This is uh, basically your implicit form, correct? Uh, sorry, the explicit form of this uh, cubic equation. So, whereas the same equation, we will write, write it in a parametric form. Now, you can see that, okay, you have four coefficients here, a, b, and c for you to manipulate or for you to identify or sometimes you give either way. 
Whereas if you write this in parametric form, you can see that uh, this number of, what are the number of coefficients here? How many coefficients you have? Can you throw so, some answers? Uh, four for yeah. uh, each coordinate. So total number is how much? Okay, basically you have Close. much more. It is around, uh, yeah, if you talk exactly, it is 12 coefficients as opposed to four coefficients you have in your usual uh, you know, explicit form. So this is what the point that I talked about in the uh, previous slide, if you look at it. Okay, so if you look at this point where I talked about more degrees of freedom to control the shape. Okay, so you actually in the case of parametric representation, you can see that you get the 12 coefficients as opposed to your usual four. Okay, in what uh, the same typical representation, but when you slightly go with a different form of representing the same cubic equation, you can see that you will get uh, a more variety in terms of number of coefficients that you can manipulate. Of course, there is also a problem because, you know, if you just manipulate one coefficient, how is the curve going to behave? Okay, then you have to study the parametric space like the XU space or YU and uh, ZU space. Then based on that, you can see how the curve is going, which is typically difficult, okay, in these kinds of shapes. So you can see that if you want to solve this equation kind of how many points you typically require, let's say, I think he had uh, talked about it in his exercise, right? So in a cubic form, so how many points? Four, you typically four points. Use? Okay, it, uh, four points. And also what will happen? Will the curve pass through all four points? Yes, sir, all four distinct uh, points. So all four distinct points. So this process is called what? Interpolation. Okay, fantastic. So this process is called interpolation. Okay. So interpolation is a very popular approach uh, to produce, uh, let's say a curve or a surface passing through certain number of points. And uh, of course, uh, always you can see that uh, you can given certain conditions, you should be able to solve it. Uh, but the problem is that uh, suppose say, uh, you find the equation of this guy and let's say you get some coefficients. Suppose if you change one of the coefficients, can you predict the behavior of this curve? The polynomial itself will change. Yes, sir. Yeah, it will change. So that's what, can you predict the behavior of this curve? Right, it will change, you are right. So is there any intuitive uh, intuitiveness to it? That is what I'm trying to get you. Suppose if you change one of the coefficients, can you also predict how the curve shape will be? Like whether it will be something like, no. you know, maybe something uh, like this, you know. So probably uh, for the lower order ones, that is for dx, probably we can predict that it will shift by so much in that direction. Okay. So in general, you can see that, uh, of course, uh, it is it is little tricky that there's, uh, the intuition is not there when you change a certain coefficient, right? So uh, for example, if you are designing a, you know, aircraft, a fuselage, or a ship hull, right? Uh, you want some intuitiveness to the design, okay? Like I can't put something and then, you know, okay, it comes out to be a very different shape than what I want to change locally. So the, without going into the too much details, okay, this, this kind of uh, interpolation forms, okay, uh, are little bit, uh, are, I would say, kind of unintuitive for design, okay? There, this is very useful and we use a lot of interpolation. Have you used this uh, Lagrangian interpolation? Yes, sir. Anybody use Lagrangian interpolation? Can you put a sir, few back? I have not sir? used it, sir, but I know, sir, we, are, we have to feed okay, it in the form it. And okay, it it it. So you have heard of the Lagrangian interpolation and so, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let me just, uh, okay, so let me uh, just go to the next slide, okay. So if you do that uh, kind of, uh, you know, interpolation, many of the interpolation methods actually will be prone to oscillations. For example, if I have between two points, okay, there are chances that uh, the, the curve can oscillate very much, okay? It, it, may, it won't be like this, like this mean or something like that. So that is what it's called as a, a Runge phenomenon. Typically, I think if you go to Wiki, there are some details about it. So as you increase the, uh, you know, order of the uh, interpolating polynomial, you can see that uh, it can go higher and higher. Okay, let me try to demonstrate that. Okay, all of you guys have a GU read open? Yes or no? Okay, now I think my, I'll try this, this thing here. Hopefully it doesn't. 
Okay, now let me try opening here. Here, there is a resolution problem for me. Okay, that is why I wanted to use the other system, but unfortunately, <clears throat> I couldn't do that. Okay, so I think in your interface, you should see a lot of uh, things on the left side button, which I am not seeing here. Uh, guys, are you seeing my space here? Are you seeing my GU edit? Can you send me some uh, uh, vocal feedback? Use your mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now you can see here I have a lot of buttons is now opening up I have move anything there is some issue with the Mac version and in this particular computer it is even more a problem okay so now this uh, entire space should be the one that I should actually get and because of this uh, so called uh, what is that uh, uh, big resolution uh, what is that retina display big retina display it has kind of damaged this entire thing on that okay so let me just uh, try and attempt this interpolation here okay so this is the button that you should guys pick okay are you seeing this interpolation button yes Can you guys give me a, okay now if you click on that okay and if you if you start putting points on this okay let us say you start putting points are you seeing my screen at the bottom yes where sir. i'm generating a curve so it is a little bit yeah. tricky Okay, and I don't know whether you are able to see it completely. Okay, so this is a problem, and uh, this is why I don't want to use this system. Unfortunately, okay, let me just <clears throat> try to recreate that and see it's going to do well. Okay, I have to a little bit get used to how it is done here. Okay, now I'm doing better. So you can see that if I generate a lot of points, okay, and if I increase the order, okay, let's say I increase the order, and then I'll just try to give the curve and then <clears throat> press OK. So you can see that the curves have oscillated between points. You can see these big oscillations, okay. So this is because of your interpolation problem, okay. As I interpolate between points, these uh, in, you know, these peaks started appearing or the curve oscillates between two given points. So that is the overall idea of, I mean, that is the overall happening or the resultant of using these interpolation approaches, okay, where it is not only easy to control, okay, these uh, oscillations and you can see that we don't want it in the case when you want to go for a design. For example, imagine you are designing the body of an aircraft and then you get all these oscillations coming in, okay. So this so because this is a phenomenon happens as you increase the degree of the curve, okay, then uh, the problem with these approaches is that, you know, it generates relation. So, so there's another problem which is called as the ab initio design, okay. So this is what we are going to more focus on, okay. So are you able to understand a little bit, at least did you guys try on your own or no? Yes, sir. So how many of you are successful in generating a curve and then increasing the degree? Or order, whichever way. So if you do that, you would have observed that, okay, there is an increase in your, uh, uh, let me probably switch to the other system later on and show more uh, demonstration of it on that. But you can clearly see that it will result in oscillation. So which we don't want in a design. That is the whole idea of uh, not using interpolation methods in uh, applications like the you know aircraft. And so if you if you have everybody would have seen car, right? So if you see the take a car hood, okay, or a bonnet sometimes, or a car uh, chassis. So so which of these uh, mathematics is being used? Can you guess? You have known all these equations, right? cubic equation and uh, so can you guess uh, which one they would have used to design such objects did you think of it or uh, anybody wild guess sir for for uh, modeling like the wind flow and stuff like that or uh, we are not even understand yeah even the, the chassis have yeah, we heard of the term chassis of a car for example the front bonnet of a car right front bonnet of a car may look like this for example you have to have a spread light coming in on that and then uh, let's say you go for a car hood, you know, and then you go and open and see all these engines inside. <clears throat> so, sorry, you can have a chassis, right? You can have a chassis design where, you know, this is a rough picture of that, but you can see this all will be very aesthetically designed, right? 
if you see all these uh, car structures it's all very aesthetically designed nowadays correct so which of these forms that you think would have been used in designing such surfaces like you have seen these uh, equations right cubic equation and same thing can be done for surface also if you put in xyz you can create a surface sir uh, we cannot same. use uh, cubic splines because of the oscillations so we'll have to go for another interpolation when designing yeah so but you can see that when you use other interpolations also it could lead to problem in the sense that uh, you saw that it can have an effects like the oscillation and so on okay that's a difficult question to answer Okay, so the idea there is that, uh, you know, we are going to talk about what are all called ab initio design. Okay, that is what is being used in all these aerospace automotive application, bit of sophisticated one. So, where the idea is that if you have four points, okay, the idea is that we don't pass the curve through all the four points. Okay, this is not an interpolation mechanism. Okay, that is what the first statement indicates, but I'll show how uh, that is going to be handled. Okay, it's not going to be constrained by passing through all the points. Okay, and then we'll see that it is going to be very oscillation free. I'll uh, show you that. And then, uh, and then you can see that it's going to be much more intuitive for making changes. Okay, that is why I want to use the GU unit. And unfortunately, <clears throat> it is a little bit off. So, so guys, can you tell me whether you are able to click and see some curve on this GU unit? Okay, how many of you are able to see that? I see only a very few guys, four or five guys only have done that. So have you not installed this on your computer except uh, the Linux guys? So can you just uh, respond like how many of you installed this? Click what you should do for a click, at least in Mac, I have to use the uh, command key. I think what you should use is this shift and uh, left button, I think, in Windows. If you are uh, in so Windows. I think it's the control and left click. Okay, control and left. Okay, one of the keys that you have to use, control and left. In Mac, it is the command uh, key or in Windows, it could be a Windows key or a command, as is mentioned, it's a control and then left mouse. So you will get the points there. Okay, so let me just, uh, okay, go back to that uh, thing and then, so, okay, so let me just, uh, <clears throat> Uh, so here is what uh, that I did, and then you can click on that and then uh, get all these ideas. So let me just, <clears throat> okay, so all the things are behaving differently in this one. Okay, let me just, <clears throat> ah. okay, this is having a little bit issue. Okay, let me just try to go to the other system and then demonstrate a little bit. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> But I just want to do that. Okay, so all the left hand side, I'm not seeing anything that is a major problem because it is supposed to load a lot of things and then I should get that. Okay, anyway, so there is a new scene that I have created. And then if I go to again curves, I can see all this. Okay, hopefully I'll be able to come back to this. <clears throat> 